Hello guys, I hope that you are happy and healthy and focus on your courses. So we're going to start a new chapter today. <coughs> so in this chapter, chapter 7 of the book, we will talk about entropy. So the lectures will be delivered in multiple parts. And in each part, we will cover about equivalent to one uh, lecture of the regular class or probably longer than that so but we will cover the entire uh, chapter <clears throat> so in this chapter we will talk about entropy this is an abstract topic in thermodynamics it is a little bit harder to understand compared to previous topics such as energy because energy is more tangible entropy is a kind of harder to you know imagine so you need to pay extra attention to this topic. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so let's start with the clauses inequality. So I trust that you remember. So let me. All right. So my pen here. Yes. So. You remember the concept of heat engine from the previous chapter where we said that for instance a system is uh, in exchange of heat with two reservoirs high temperature reservoir at th receiving qh and then part of this heat is converted to net amount of work and then the rest of it is uh, rejected to the to a low temperature reservoir at tl <clears throat> so this is what we had in the previous chapter so the Clausius theorem 1855 states that for a system exchanging heat like the system that we have here this heat engine that the heart of the uh, this heat engine for a system exchanging heat with external reservoirs and undergoing a cyclic process so like a power plant one that ultimately re returns a system to its original state so where we have a cycling process we can say that the cyclic integral or the contour integral of delta q over t is less or equal to zero so first of all, what is meant by a cyclic integral? You may or may not have seen it before. So a cycling, cyclic integral or a contour integral is evaluated in a closed contour. For instance, it's evaluated uh, on a circle or it's evaluated on a uh, like rectangle. So it means that if it's evaluated on a rectangle on each side of the rectangle this integral is simplified and then we move from one point and to complete the cycle so if if you are if you haven't heard about the cyclic integral you could just google it in order to get a better understanding however here we are not going to go through the mathematical formulation of a cyclic integral so you should be fine if you just understand its meaning so the meaning of the cycling integral of delta q over t means that we should go ahead and evaluate delta q over t as we as we basically follow multiple processes in order to complete the cycle and the thing is that in each process during each process the delta q and the associated t the temperature may actually vary so that's why the magnitude of delta q over t is not the same across the entire path of this cycling integral <clears throat> so for instance in this case if you look at this heat engine we do have two instances of heat transfer one is from the high temperature reservoir qh 
at the boundary temperature of th so a part of this cyclic integral would be qh over th and then for the rest of the cycle there is another instance of heat transfer which is ql over its associated temperature tl so this cycling integral therefore for this heat engine is equivalent to qh over th which is positive qh is coming in minus ql over tl that's it so clauses stated that this integral is less than zero or equal to zero so it is valid for all thermodynamic cycles reversible or irreversible however less than zero is valid for irreversible cycles and equal to zero is valid for totally reversible or at least internally reversible cycles so for internally reversible cycle which is uh, which actually leads us to define entropy a new a new property the integral the cyclic integral or contour integral of delta q over t for this sub internally reversible process is equal to zero all right <clears throat> so and we recall that q is positive if it's to the system and it's negative if it is from the system so in this case qh is positive ql is positive is negative and t in these relations is the ther thermodynamic temperature at the boundary where the differential heat dq is transferred between the system and the surroundings so th is associated with qh tl is associated with ql so you may want to know and want to see the proof of delta q over t is less than or equal to zero <clears throat> some people may, may see it intuitively but there is a proof for that so we can go ahead and modify the heat engine that we actually had in the previous slide and remove the low temperature reservoir and replace the sink low temperature reservoir or the sink with a piston cylinder device so get rid of the heat rejection to a sink and instead put a piston cylinder device so that it can actually receive the heat delta q and generate some work so let's assume that this is the boundaries of the system as you see with these dashed lines we define w sub c as all works of two combined systems so some work is generated by the heat engine itself such as a, a power plant or an internal combustion engine so that's delta w in a, a reversible cyclic device then that delta q the difference between delta q r and delta w enters the piston cylinder and it results in perform performing some additional work and that work is called the delta w of this system so this piston cylinder system so if we write the first law of thermodynamics the energy balance for the entire system within the dashed lines we can say that energy in is equal to what energy in minus energy out is equal to the change of the energy of the system combined system so this delta w combined therefore is equal to delta q which is coming in and this delta w combined is the sum of both works from the heat engine and from the piston cylinder so it's equal to delta w combined sorry delta w combined is equal to delta qr minus the change of the energy of the system 
combined system. Okay, so, and we know that the heart of the heat engine actually undergoes a cyc cyclic process, so the change of the energy in that part is zero already because it's in a cycle. But we don't know, know it yet for this uh, piston cylinder part. So since the device is reversible, like the, the heat engine is reversible, so according to the Carnot principles, right? So it's a Carnot cycle, right? So delta QR over TR is equal to delta Q over T. Delta QR coming in over TR, its associated temperature, is equal to delta Q, the Q going out, divided by its associated temperature, which is an imaginary temperature T. So we can go ahead and replace this delta QR from this Carnot relationship uh, in order to arrive at this second equation here. So delta W combined is equal to TR delta Q over T from here minus D, the change in the energy of the system. So now if the piston if the piston expands and then contracts and comes back to its original uh, state, so if it follows a cycle, then the change of the energy of the gas in the cylinder will be zero as well. So delta E would be zero and the total delta E combined would be zero. As a result, if we will see that delta W combined will be equal to TR delta Q over T. Now if we integrate, because it's delta W, so if we integrate, we will find uh, the total W combined, which is equal to TR cycling integral of delta Q over T. Because we said everything here is goes in a cycle. So now, if you look at this heat engine here, what you see is that Q is coming in and the net effect is only a W which is generated. And there is no heat actually rejected to any reservoir. So this actually violates the second law of thermodynamics. So if you remember, this violates the Kelvin-Planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics. So as a result, this W, which is exiting this uh, system, this cannot be positive. If it's positive, then it will violate the second law. So as a result, this W is either is zero WC is either zero or is negative. So the direction would be the other way. So as a result, the right side, which is the integral, has to be either negative or equal to zero because WC has to be either negative or equal to zero. And that proves this cyclic integral of delta Q over T less than or equal to zero. <clears throat> okay, so you actually must know this cons this inequality that the cyclic integral of delta q over t is less than zero or equal to zero but this is the proof if you want to delve in further and understand what's going on and it is not difficult to understand if you try to understand it it will help you understand uh, the other concepts and topics as well Here you see another proof for the inequality of the cyclic integral of delta Q over T less than zero. So this is uh, my own proof. So you go over it, hopefully it is correct. If you see any discrepancy in this proof, let me know. It seems that this proof is straightforward and you can just follow. It is very easy to follow, so I do not spend additional time on it.
All right. So, so now we know that for a cyclic process, integral of delta Q over T is less than zero or equal to zero. And we said that if the process is internally reversible, this integral is equal to zero. Okay. Now what? So that we do have a cyclic integral of something which is equal to zero when we uh, actually complete a cycle. So it's like you do have something that something is delta Q over T. When you start from point one and then follow a process and multiple process and you come back, Again, you that thing remains the same. So it's not a path function. It is a point function. So it is similar to, for instance, energy or similar to a volume, similar to uh, uh, all our temperature pressure. So because of this property, because of this characteristic, this trait, we can tell that, oh, this delta Q over T must be a property, must be something which only depends on the state of the substance. It's not, if it's a point function. We call this entropy. That's, that's where the problem starts from because we have delta Q divided by T and then we call it entropy, right? That's why it's an abstract topic. So later we will see that entropy is actually a measure of the disorder in the system. So if the system is more chaotic or disordered, then the entropy is higher. And when the system is more ordered, the entropy is lower. But still, it's not that much straightforward. So the definition of entropy. I mean the meaning of entropy, but the definition is quite straightforward. ds, the, the change in the entropy, is equal to the integ is equal to delta q divided by t. Since the integral of this uh, property delta q over t is equal to zero in a cycle, therefore in a process from point one to two, not a cycle, the change in that uh, quantity delta q over t for an internally reversible process is called ds differential of entropy so since this is differential of entropy if you integrate delta s the change in the entropy is equal to s2 minus s1 so now we have actually followed the path from point one to point two, so process one to two. Uh, it's equal to the integral of now no cyclic. This is not cyclic anymore because this is just a process from point one to two or state one to two over the integration is taken over delta Q over T for an internally reversible process. So now you have been <clears throat> acquainted with a new property entropy and that property is its change ds is equal to the change in the is equal to heat transfer divided by the associated temperature during an internally reversible process and another let's elaborate further that why we call this delta Q over T a new property, why entropy is a property, because it's similar to volume, and volume is a property. If you look at this system, this uh, piston cylinder system with a given volume, so if it is expanded and then comes back to its original state, the cyclic integral of dV which is equal to delta V of the cycle is equal to zero. Because this cyclic integral is equal to like V2 minus V1 
and then plus v1 minus v2 it's equal to zero so we can figure out we can basically realize understand comprehend that this delta q over t is something similar to volume so it's a property okay so the net change in volume which is a property during a cycle is always zero since the net amount of reversible delta q over t in a cycle is zero thus entropy must be a property as well such as volume so so the entropy change between two specified states is the same whether the process is reversible or irreversible so we define the entropy we actually found the entropy for an internally reversible process and we said that for an internally reversible process entropy is equal to the integral of delta q over t but once the entropy has been defined then that's the property that's a point property it's not a function of the process path it's not a path function work for instance was a path function but what was a path function but entropy is not a path function it's a point function so it means that if you show the process two processes on t s diagram by the way the unit of entropy s is equal to the unit of heat with which is joules over the unit of temperature which is kelvin so the unit of s is kilojoules per kelvin so if we'll show a process process one to two so process one to two is reversible so on this process we can actually find uh, the change in the entropy but the ten, ten entropy change is the same even if we had followed a different path however if we had followed a an irreversible process we would have not been able to actually calculate the change in the entropy using that process path so therefore for either of these two processes delta s is equal to s2 minus s1 uh, if s2 is 0.7 s1 is 0.3 we can find delta s so let's consider a special case internally reversible and also isothermal heat transfer process so by definition delta s is the integral of delta q over t from one to two for an internally reversible process if it's isothermal then temperature is a constant can comes out of the integral it's t0 so delta s is equal to one over t0 integral of delta q so integral of delta q is equal to the total amount of heat transfer q so for this internally reversible isothermal process therefore delta s is equal to the heat transfer q divided by the associated temperature which is isothermal so this therefore tells us that if we do have an isothermal process which is also internally reversible the heat transfer during this process is equal to t0 delta s okay <clears throat> so the increase of entropy principle so let's say that we start from the Clausius inequality the integral of cyclic integral of, integral of delta q over t is equal to zero or less than zero and how to define this cycle we start from point one 
go to point two on process one two which is reversible or irreversible it's just any process one to two is just any process but when we want to come back from two to one we certainly follow a reversible internally reversible process so from two to one we can actually define the entropy so now if we break down this cycling integral from 1 to 2, it is just a general process, so we only can write it as the integral of 1 to 2 delta q over, two, uh, over t. Plus the integral from 2 to 1 of delta q over t, but this time it's internally reversible. So this, what you see here, this integral plus this integral is equivalent to the cycling integral because when you go from one to two and then come back from two to one you complete a cycle and this must be smaller than or equal to zero however this part of this pro this uh, formulation the integral from two to one of delta q over t for internally reversible system this is actually the definition of entropy that we just had in the previous slide so the second integral here is therefore equal to s1 minus s2 delta s from point 2 to 1 so we end up getting that the integral of delta q over t from point 1 to 2 plus s1 minus s2 must be equal to zero or smaller than zero so as a result if we rearrange these terms <clears throat> move entropies to the other side we will we get that s2 minus s1 is greater than or equal to the integral of delta q over t from point one to two So why can we also conclude from this? What we conclude from this is that in the differential form from point one to two, ds is always greater than or equal to delta q over t. So the equality sign here holds for an internally reversible process. according to actually the definition that we had and the inequality is for an irreversible process so ds is always greater than or equal to delta q over t if it's reversible internally reversible it's equal if it's if it's irreversible ds is larger than delta q over t so what happens what happens that it's larger than then that's the topic of the next slide <clears throat> since for a general process ds is equal to or greater than delta q over t we can go ahead and write the change in the entropy of the system delta s of the system from like 1 to 2 as equal to s2 minus s1 and then instead of inequality convert it to equality and then write this the, this term here the integral of delta q over t so but something is missing because the delta s is larger than delta q over t right so it must be equal to this integral plus another term that another another term we call it entropy generation s generation so basically we have converted an inequality to an equality by introducing a new term s generation <clears throat> so this is called entropy generation so an uh, entropy generation is zero for a reversible process if one to two is reversible then delta s is equal to this integral so s generation must be zero 
However, if the process is irreversible, then the, in, then the inequality, the greater than sign is applicable here. Therefore, S generation must be greater than zero. And it is impossible for S generation to be less than zero. <clears throat> So the entropy generation, S generation, is always a positive uh, number or it's equal to zero. It's equal to zero if the process is uh, reversible and it's larger than zero for any other process. So there is a question here, can the entropy of a system during a process decrease? So this is one of those 1% uh, uh, questions that I usually would ask in the class. Can the entropy of a system during a process decrease? If you look at here, delta S is equal to this integral of Q over T plus S generation. S generation is always positive, but how about integral of delta Q over T? If we want delta S of the system to be negative or entropy to decrease, then it means that this integral must become negative. And negative in a way that it is actually larger than S generation as well. That is absolute value. So yes, can the entropy of a system during a process decrease? Yes, if that system loses heat. Because if it loses heat, then this delta Q will be negative. And it's possible that the entropy of the system actually decreases. A reference value for zero entropy, here as you see, we see delta S similar to delta U in the first law. So what is the reference value for this entropy? It could be chosen as an arbitrary number for zero entropy, but it really makes sense to assigns zero entropy to absolute zero temperature because we do have the maximum level of order at the absolute zero. So the, uh, abs the reference value for entropy can be chosen at absolute zero, but it can be chosen, it can be arbitrarily assigned because we really need in calculations, in thermodynamic problems, we really want change in the entropy of the system. <clears throat> All right, so now we are getting close to the end of this lecture and it's becoming a little bit longer than usual. So I, let's talk about isolated systems. So isolated system is like a system cons which consists of multiple subsystems, one, two, three, four, up to N. So the total entropy of this isolated system is equal to the entropy of each of the subsystems. So the entropy change of an isolated system is the sum of the entropy changes of the components and is never less than zero. So delta S of the isolated system is therefore greater than zero or equal to zero, similar to what we had in the previous a slide because delta S of the system is greater than zero or equal to zero for internally reversible systems. So, and a system and its surroundings form actually an isothermal isolated system, like the universe. So if you look at this piston cylinder device and the surroundings, the surrounding could be like the rest of you know, it's so big, you know, the rest of the universe. So the entire universe and the system under consideration together form an isolated system. As a result, the delta S of this iso isolated system must be equal to zero or greater than zero. So we can go ahead and show the delta S the delta S total of this system and its surrounding 
as delta S of the system plus delta S of the surrounding, which is equ equal to zero or greater than zero. <clears throat> so since there is no heat transfer crossing the boundaries of the universe, so the integral of delta Q over T will be zero for delta S of the system and delta S of the surrounding together. Because one receives heat, the other one uh, gives away heat. So that integral would cancel out. So entropy therefore only changes because of entropy generation that we have here because of the irreversibilities. Not because of heat transfer, because heat transfer one receives, one gives away. So entropy of the system and the surrounding the universe altogether increases therefore because of the irreversibilities so all right so what else do we have here some remarks about entropy a process must proceed in the direction that complies with the increase of entropy principle meaning that entropy generation is greater than zero or equal to zero. So entropy generation is equal to zero means the process is reversible. There is no friction. There is no sudden exp expansion. There is no viscosity effect. So this is not really possible because this is an idealization. So in reality, in the nature, processes occur in the direction that their entropy generation will increase, S generation will increase. So entropy generation is a measure of the magnitude of the irreversibilities during that process. So the larger the entropy generation, the more irreversible or non-ideal that process is. And the entropy change of a system can be negative why and how if the system loses heat but the entropy generation cannot be negative because entropy generation at best case scenario can be zero if the process is reversible <clears throat> so if you look at this system here and the surrounding so let's see what's happening so both together form an isolated system so the system is giving away heat to its surrounding, so it's actually losing entropy. So delta S of the system is negative, minus 2 kilojoule per Kelvin. And as a result of heat, this heat transfer, delta S of the surrounding, let's say it's 3 kilojoule per Kelvin. It must be larger than 2. So what is what happened here is that the sum of this delta SS minus 2 plus 3 is actually positive. It's equal to 1. And the reason is that this 1 kilojoule per Kelvin is not because of, it's because of the irreversibilities. It's not because of the integral of delta Q over T. Instead, it's because of different kind of irreversibilities such as finite uh, heat transfer, such as friction, such as sudden expansion, and so on. All right, so this brings us to the end of this lecture. So I suggest that you watch this uh, lecture multiple times. Pretty much everything that you should know is there. Some of them you need to, you know, pay extra attention to understand. It is not an easy concept, so it definitely needs you to watch it multiple times and definitely read the textbook. And of course, uh, get back to me if you do have questions. Thank you for your attention.